Hey everyone, before we start the show, I just want to get some plugs out of the way. If you enjoy this podcast and you're into wrestling, check out the Nerds and Marks podcast or Marty and Sarah Love Wrestling. If you're not getting your fill on movie and entertainment discussion, then check out the Entertainment Buffet podcast. If you want to dive into the world of video games, I highly recommend the Dark Cast by my friends over at DarkStation.com. Listen to them cover important topics and interview men and women from all over the industry. Thanks for listening and enjoy the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Shelved. I am your host, Jeremy Meyer. Um, now, I didn't get a mini episode out last week, um, which I'm sorry about that. <laughs> um, I had the Star Wars episode good and ready to go, and when it came to the mini episode, I was I was just a little burnt out, and it's my laziness, and I'm sorry. Um, although not many people download these mini episodes anyway, so. If you're one of the ones waiting for one, thank you for being a true, I almost said diamond listener, but I'd be stealing that from another show. But we got a mini episode out this week, so what do I have to talk about? I missed a week, so there must be something. Well, I will say, first of all, that I don't know what ep- what episode we're doing this Friday. Um, currently, don't have anything scheduled. Um, I'm starting this week i've been trying to set up uh my future recording sessions i have already sent out a couple scripts to some people so we're getting back to some script episodes <clears throat> we do have one more star wars commentary track to do with my wife we are going to finish up the series with return of the jedi that'll probably be either next week or the week after i'd like to do it next week just get those all wrapped up with her so she doesn't have to worry about those anymore. Um, but yeah, so this Friday, it's it's going to be a surprise. I'm not really sure what it's going to be. I have a couple ideas of something that would be a little simple, um, but still kind of in tradition with like the script episodes. Because I know I've been doing a lot of different stuff here recently, and I'm sure people are getting a little tired of it. But, uh, you know, I, I want to try new things, and I love covering movies in any way, and I don't want to only do the script episodes, even though that's kind of what the show is based on, but it's, like, fun to mix it up once in a while, and I hope you guys have been enjoying that. Um, work has finally started to slow down here, so we should be able to get to some stuff, like, back to our regularly scheduled programming. Man, that is a word I have had trouble saying my entire life. Regularly. Regularly. <coughs> Um, yeah, so in the meantime, for this mini episode, uh, we're going to leave Friday a surprise because I don't know what we're going to do, but we are, I do have some things to discuss and that is mostly some movie reviews. Um, I saw a lot of movies recently, uh, ones that recently came out on Blu-ray, even went to the theater for one. Um, so I do want to point out that if you've never heard of this website, there's a website called Letterboxd, and I know I've talked about it before, but basically what it is, is um, it's kind of like if you and your friends watch a lot of movies, it's a way to log everything that you guys have been watching, and it makes it easier to follow. So I have a Letterboxd account, and uh, basically what it is, every time you watch a movie, you go on there and you log a rating. And you can create lists on there. Like recently, I went through and created my favorite movies from the years for every year from 2017 to 2000, just because it was fun. You know, you can just sort the movies by release year and just add them to a list. So I had fun doing that. And like favorite is used loosely there. It's uh, it's more um, movies I liked that came out this year that year or like enough to watch multiple times. Um, so yeah, I, I have a couple new movies that I've seen. Um, I'm pulling up my letterbox here so I can talk about them. Uh, and okay. So yeah, I have more than I thought. So the first one I'll talk about is split and I'm going to go in the order of which I watch these movies. Um, and split. Um, I don't know if I've ever talked about M night Shyamalan on this podcast before, but 
I hate M. Night Shyamalan. I've never liked any of his movies. I don't think he's a very good director. I don't think he's a very good writer. Um, I'll give him The Sixth Sense, even though I didn't particularly enjoy it, but I know people love that movie. That movie is what launched his career and everything. But for me, it just it didn't do it. And uh, I know everybody points to Unbreakable, which Unbreakable is one I was never able to finish for a long time. Like... Uh, I everyone always says oh Unbreakable is really good it's really interesting and I watched it recently at work for the first time and I don't know I, I was bored it's it's just to me it's boring it doesn't have anything that interesting in it like the, the idea is cool like you know it's the most realistic interpretation of a superhero movie than you, that you could ever see and you know more realistic than Nolan's Batman movies but it just it just doesn't do it to me. Like there's one scene in particular, where, like this should be a really great scene, really tense and blah blah blah. And that's the scene where the his kid is holding a gun on him, saying that like, oh, you'll be fine if I shoot you. And that scene is the way it's directed, kind of pulls out all of the tension. And that's like a perfect example of why I don't like M Night Shyamalan. Is that scene could have been so great if handled by a better director, and unfortunately, it was done by him. So. Split, I will say, I, th I thought it was okay. It's definitely one of his best made movies. Um, the movie is carried by James McAvoy. He's a great actor. Um, he does the best he can with the material. Uh, I, I like the, the twist at the end because, you know, there's always got to be a twist. Um, I don't know if I should. I'm going to talk spoilers for any of these movies. So just heads up. I'll, for all these movies, I'll do a small review, and then if I have any spoilers to say, I'll uh, drop in the warning. But a uh, spoiler warning, the, you know, the whole movie, they're addressing the fact that he has this other personality, and it's the beast, and it's going to be so scary when it comes or whatever. And I like that when it actually comes, he's basically like superhuman, like the way your mind can alter your body if you truly believe something. And you know, they try to hammer that in throughout the movie, and I think that's a little clumsy. But when it actually happens, it's it's cool. But uh, the ending is a little flat, like the way he sees that the girl is wounded and scarred like he is from abuse, um, which I wasn't clear if it was self-inflicted or because she was clearly raped by her uncle, who she lives with. Um, it's, I don't know. It just it felt like a clumsy movie. Th and it put a bad taste in my mouth right from the beginning where the uh what's it, what's it called the the abduction scene is so poorly handled where like he gets in the car and there is like a 20 minute period where they're just like who are you uh, 20 minutes is exaggerating obviously but it's just like who are you sir i think you're in the wrong car and then he sprays the girls in the back but doesn't uh bother the one in the passenger seat and she has all of the time in the world to get out of the car and she could have escaped. Like there's no way he would have been fast enough to catch her. And she just sits there and I, I don't buy it at all. Um, I, 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 you can argue that like, Oh, well she's scared. So she's kind of frozen in place. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't believe that she, she would have been out of there and you know, problem would have been solved. So split, I don't know. It was clumsy. But it was one of his better directed movies. Uh, there was some bad writing in there, but uh, nothing particularly stood out to me. Uh, I think it gets a lot of praise because of how like he's done a lot of bad movies recently. And then he did The Visit, which people liked. I still haven't seen The Visit. And then this one, which people liked even more, I believe. Uh, and the way he connected it to Unbreakable, that it just doesn't do anything for me. Um, it just, to me, it was just like an okay movie. Uh, so I gave that one like a three out of five. Like, you know, it's okay. But uh, the other one, the actually, I skipped this one. The first one I watched actually was The Wolverine. Um, I never saw the second Wolverine movie. And I, you know, was skeptical skeptical about it because the first one I thought was so bad. Uh, but, um, you know, Logan was great. So I was like, you know what? Everybody always says the second Wolverine movie was a lot better. Uh, so I should give it a watch. So I watched that and I, I really liked it. I uh, gave it a four out of five. Um, I like that it was, you know, kind of a low key movie. Um, 
there's not like a ton of action, but the action they have is really great. Uh, the scene on the bullet train in particular, which from the trailers I thought was going to be kind of a ridiculous scene, but uh, turned out to be really fucking awesome. So uh, I, I highly recommend Wolverine. If you never saw it, um, but you loved Logan, I highly recommend going back and watching that. And I've seen some people, uh, obviously this was never planned, but there's a moment in Wolverine where there's one of the other mutant characters. She's like, you know, she can see people's deaths and that's kind of her power. Um, and she says that, you know, she saw his death and saw him dying with his heart in his hand. And if you go and watch Logan, he dies while holding the hand of X 23. And you know, that his whole death scene there in particular is uh riddled with double meanings and stuff about like oh this is what it feels like and you can be like oh that's what it feels like to die or this is what it feels like to love um but yeah there's just kind of more playing into that I, I mean it was i didn't know that the wolverine was directed by the same director who did logan so um yeah i can definitely see the guy's pedigree uh logan was great the Wolverine was great. Um, the story in Wolverine had some clunky moments, but overall, it was really good. I really liked it. Uh, so another movie that I never expected to enjoy at all because I didn't hear that many good things about it. Um, I've never been a big fan of this franchise or any of these movies, but um, I watched Kong Skull Island, and that was another one somebody rented and brought to work. And uh I, I really liked it. <laughs> like, uh, it's not like a good movie, but it's just kind of dumb fun. Um, K Kong is really cool. Like a lot of the creatures on the island are really cool. The action scenes are a lot of fun. There's some interesting and pretty good camera work in the movie. Uh, I never thought I would like this movie at all. I've just never been a fan of King Kong in any form. Um, but this one kind of took me by surprise. And it's it's just like a good time um you don't it's one you don't have to think about too much uh you kind of just go in and you know prepare to watch some dumb king kong action and you get that like the end in particular uh i guess slight spoiler um kong has a propeller of a submarine or a ship on the end of a chain and is just whipping it into this monster and yeah, the end just turns into a big kaiju battle and it's fucking so great. And that part I, I was in, I was in all the way for that. It, I, I loved it by that point. I was fucking double fists in the air. Like this is fucking awesome. And yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. It's dumb. Um, John C. Riley is really fun in the movie. He's the character that's been like stuck on the Island since world war two and actually like when they come in and they're kind of filling them in on the rest of the world. And he's just like, Oh really? And uh, like he kind of plays off some stuff of like, oh, that's not surprising, or oh, that's really what happened. And I had a lot of fun with that stuff. He he was really good in the movie. Uh, but yeah, Kong Skull Island. I mean, none of the characters are super memorable or matter that much at all. It's really about Kong, and this movie was just a big setup so they can do King Kong versus Godzilla soon, which we all know that that's coming. And um, I don't know. It was it was fine. It was fun. I gave it a four out of five just because, like, I was, I was able to shut off my brain and just, like, enjoy this giant monster movie, which normally none of that stuff really does it for me. But this one, I don't know. I guess it maybe it just hit me on the right day. But Kong Skull Island, I, I would review if you know what you or uh, recommend, I mean, if you know what you're getting into. Um, so my next one is Ghost in the Shell. And this might be a little bit of a controversial one because, first of all, I will say... I've never seen the original uh, anime. Uh, I have the manga. Um, haven't read it, but I know it's uh, how uh, it's held in high regard and everything. Um, I know there's some dumb stuff with the movie, with the whitewashing of Scarlett Johansson, and they handle that in a really shitty way in the movie, I will say. But overall, I'll say I really like this movie. Um, first of all, it looks incredible like this is a movie you put on just to demo your tv setup it's shot beautifully the special effects are incredible their version of japan is just something to behold um story-wise it, it feels similar enough to the original what i know of the original what i've seen of the original um the look of the villain is really cool 
And it's this movie that really makes me want them to make a Deus Ex movie based on uh, the video game franchise, which I have been replaying recently because of this movie. And uh, I don't know. I need to see it again because I feel like a little bit of it. We were watching it at work and some of it um, I, I was kind of missing just because the nature of, hey, we're watching this at work. And I'm, it's at during a time where I'm like kind of focusing on the work and don't have time to focus on the movie. So I definitely feel like I missed some stuff. But uh, overall, what I saw, I really enjoyed. A lot of fun action scenes. They definitely have enough of the iconic scenes from the anime to kind of please some of the fans. But yeah, the way they handle the character stuff, which, spoiler again, um, saying that she's actually the mind of a Japanese girl inside the shell that just happens to be a white woman is dumb. And it should have just not been in the movie. They should have just not addressed it. And... You know, it really sucks that they couldn't have cast a Japanese actress, but I think Scarlett Johansson's a great actress. I thought she was really great in the movie, and, you know, it, it doesn't make it better, but I thought it was fine. I just wish they didn't even bother to address it, because that's what makes it worse. Um, but, yeah, I, I gave Ghost in the Shell a 4 out of 5. I, I want to see it again, but I could really li- grow to like that movie. Um, I know a buddy of mine, Adam Kondra, he is super into that movie and he keeps talking about it on social media and he's also on letterbox if you want to follow him um but yeah he he talks very highly of that movie he can probably articulate it a lot better he wrote a uh, really good letterbox review on his letterbox account so maybe just go check that out um so moving on to the next thing i watched the castlevania series on netflix um, now full disclosure, Castlevania will probably be the next, uh, movie script that we talk about. I already sent that one out to a guest. Uh, we just have to read it and set up a recording time. Um, and that guest is, uh, Jordan pride who was on the Batman Superman episode, which was one of my favorite episodes. And he's a big fan of the resident evil movies in the same way that I'm kind of a fan of the resident evil movies of, Hey, these are really bad, but we kind of like them as a guilty pleasure. Um, and it's written by Paul W. S. Anderson, who wrote the and directed the Resident Evil movies. So that neither one of us are big Castlevania aficionados, although I've always been interested in it. Um, so that we'll kind of be approaching it from the angle of this is a Paul W. S. Anderson movie, not a Castlevania movie. Um, but yeah, the Castlevania Netflix series I I really liked. Um, it's an incomplete story. It's only four episodes, twenty two minutes long, or however. Um, but here's what I'll say from what I understand, this series was written off of a movie script that they split up and are turning into three seasons of a television show. They've already said the second season is going to be more episodes. I think either six or eight. Um, but I, I really enjoyed it. The animation is super great and it's definitely, um, American animation emulating Japanese anime, but, um, I, I really liked it. Uh, the story, it's 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 kind of the early parts of a story, so it doesn't move too far, but you get to know some of your characters. Um, it's actually based on Castlevania 3, which was a prequel, and had three playable characters. And this whole season sets up those three characters, one of them being Alucard, who everybody knows is Dracula's kid from Castlevania, who you play as in Symphony, uh, Symphony of the Night, which is one of the most popular Castlevania games. But uh, it's, it's really good. The uh, fight scenes are super great, um, especially the the last one with uh, Trevor Belmont versus Alucard is a highlight of the show by far. And uh, tr- the character of Trevor Belmont is just really well realized. Like he's kind of one of those uh, reluctant hero types, which are I'm always kind of a sucker for those characters. Like he's kind of an asshole, but, you know, he's a justified asshole. Um, you know, the Belmonts, they've all been everyone kind of hates them and cast them out but uh they are these great monster hunters and you know he's like hey you know everybody knows who i am and it's kind of a burden but it's it's really fun um i highly write you can burn through it so quick i would maybe just wait until season two comes out next year um just so you have more of it because my biggest problem was there wasn't more of it but uh yeah just know hey you're gonna see dracula in the first episode and then you're never gonna see him again and i kind of hope you never do until the final confrontation with Dracula, because to me, that's the way it should be. But, uh, I, I highly recommend the Castlevania series. I think it's the only video game movie or cartoon or anything that's uh, rated fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. 
and it's it's worth it it's really good so check that out or wait for season two to check it out just so you get a little more but castlevania i i really enjoyed it okay so uh the next one i watched it's kind of an older movie but it's one i, I bought on blu-ray a long time ago and just haven't watched it and um that movie is warrior the mma movie with joel edgerton and uh, tom hardy nick nolte and um i really like the movie but i thought it was a little overwritten and there's some drama for the sake of drama but really enjoyable uh, i just wish it was more about the family conflict and less about their own separate issues i was kind of expecting it to be akin to the wrestler but with mma and there's definitely some similarities but there's just all this extra added bullshit like it feels like the writer came up with four different scripts and then combined them all into one script. So it's like, oh, it could just be about this broken family dynamic between these two brothers and their alcoholic father or recovering alcoholic father. But instead it becomes, oh, and the one brother is, uh, they're going to lose their house. So they need to, he needs the money for that. And this other brother, he was in the army and he saved this, uh, all these people, but his best friend died and he wants to win this money to give it to the family oh, and their dad is an alcoholic and he wants to see the kids, but he can't. And um, he, of course, has a relapse that only lasts about like a minute. And it just, it was a little overwhelming with story. And I think it just should have been a little more focused. Uh, but it's, it's really enjoyable. Honestly, it made me want more MMA movies. Um, this, particularly in this uh, like drama area, drama genre. And um um it's just kurt angle was in it which was pretty cool and the fight scenes were really great um of course every fight scene is like wow if this really happened in ufc this would be like the best fight anyone had ever seen ufc is not usually like this but uh it's it's really good i i highly recommend it um but it is it's just a little too much story going on um it definitely feels like a movie that people just kind of missed out on i don't know many people that have seen it and when we were watching it at work like i was one of two people that had even like heard of it um but warrior it was it was solid i gave it a four out of five like it's it's overwritten but it didn't interfere with my enjoyment of it um so just real quick to point out i did watch both of the raid movies again which i love the raid and the raid 2 if you haven't seen those fucking check them out they're some of the best action movies uh, i've seen them like a hundred times um i watched clue which is one of my favorite comedies of all time a uh, very smart uh underrated movie based on the board game um but let's go to the main event which is uh me and my wife we went on like a double date with her sister and her sister's fiance and we saw atomic blonde um now this is based on a comic book called the coldest city and god that would have been a much better name for this movie but um atomic blonde uh it's, it's directed by the same guy who did john wick so you know the action caliber is there uh this movie is fucking awesome like i went in kind of expecting like okay it's probably gonna be uh i saw the trailers so i I know it's a spy movie which if you know anything about me i love spy movies so i was really looking forward to it just from that and um it's it turned out to be more than i expected i expected like oh this is gonna be light on the spy movie but heavy on the action and it was kind of the other way around like the action is fucking great but there, there's less of it than I thought. And when it's there, it's very impactful and just so well directed. Like this guy spent years as a stunt coordinator before he was ever a director. Uh, John Wick was the first movie he directed. And it, it just shows like the caliber of his work. He's I've never seen an action movie that's been better composed than his movies. And Atomic Blonde just takes what he did in John Wick and amps it up but puts in a little bit of a deeper story, which I wasn't expecting. So it, it delivered on that. All the performances are super great. James McAvoy was awesome. Uh, Charlize Theron, of course, was awesome. Uh, John Goodman, he's he's in it very little, but he's really great. It's it's a good movie, and it's, it's definitely one you can get more out of, like watching it multiple times. So definitely see it in theaters, and then be sure to check it out on blu-ray i can't wait to see it again my wife ever since we got back from the theater has just been like i can't stop thinking about that movie and she like never says that so that's about as high praise as i can give it but atomic blonde 
super great movie i fucking loved it uh, i i highly suggest checking it out uh it's a spy movie with style and the style is definitely in the trailer but even more amplified on the screen when you see the movie uh some actually good twists like some i saw coming some i didn't so it was it was a lot of fun i could not recommend this movie more uh i i love it so much um but yeah so those are all the reviews i got it's all the movies i saw I saw quite a few recently um i love watching new movies and it, it had been a while and we kind of just loaded a bunch up but uh it's it's all those the only one i didn't really love was split so i'd say it was a good little trend of movies there but uh that's all i got for today's mini episode um again i have an idea of what we're going to do for friday but i'll let it i'll kind of let it be a surprise um but yeah so next script will be castlevania um i i don't know what scripts are coming up after that i'm going to send out my list probably today to all my normal guests and see if anybody wants to pick something um and then we'll we'll move on from there so we're going to be some more script episodes coming up in the future here uh one more star wars commentary and then we'll see if she wants to do the prequels from that point on um and actually my wife just started uh reading harry potter for the first time and we got into a debate about uh harry potter versus star wars so we might bring that debate to the podcast uh once she gets a little further in the series i say once she hits about the fourth book because then you kind of you get everything you need uh to know about harry potter so we'll 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 look into that but that might be a future debate coming up um i still want to do some movie pitch episodes where like me and a guest sit down and like hey let's come up with a movie and let's pitch it and see what we can do uh but yeah so that's that's what we got uh, be sure to check back be sure to review the show on itunes um i did get a new review actually let me go ahead and pull that up because i do say that i will read the reviews on the show if anybody you know, leaves one. And I was very surprised. Somebody left another five star review uh, a couple of weeks ago, actually. And um, let's see. So this is by Zool18, Zool with like 14 O's. <laughs> um, and it says, interesting concept. I really like the concept of this podcast and the host is engaging. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah. So thanks for the review. Be sure for everyone else to go leave a review. The show's still sitting at five stars. So I feel really good about that. I was able to turn around the one guy who left a one star review. So, you know, he was complaining about audio quality issues and Hey, it was my first episode. So I had to figure some things out. Uh, I feel like I'm figuring things out every episode. So, uh, thanks for giving me another chance and fixing your review. I uh, really appreciate that. Uh, but yeah, so, uh, the last thing I can actually, uh, pitch here, I've mentioned it on the show before, but uh, guest of the show, Brandon Prosick is hosting a play in uh, Chicago and that play opens up this weekend. I am trying to pull up the information here, but um, I'm actually going to the Saturday show. So if you happen to want to go to this play, um, you can, and you might see me there. So the name of the play is how does that make you feel? And it's kind of a dark comedy about a therapist uh, dealing with uh, his a group of his patients that are all like hey i'm gonna kill myself and it's kind of his last attempt to try to save them and it's going to be at stage 773 in chicago so you can it's a pretty easy place to find you can just google it but i actually have the address here it is uh 1225 west belmont avenue in chicago uh and you can get the tickets uh, they actually have a facebook page you can just search for how does that make you feel or brandon prosick it should be easy to find from there but i am going to the show on the 12th um, so the show is August 10th through the 20th. Uh, I would highly recommend checking it out. It sounds awesome. He was a guest on the show and I will be there on the Saturday show. So maybe you can come and see me there, but, uh, that's all I got for today. Again, be sure to rate and review the show on iTunes. Be sure to follow us on social medias at shelved podcast on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, but all right, that's going to be it for today. So thank you for listening. Be sure to check back for Friday's episode. Uh, be sure to leave some reviews and let me know how you're feeling about uh, these Star Wars commentaries or these other commentaries or some other stuff that's coming up. 
Uh, if you hate them, let me know. There's only one more Star Wars commentary coming up. That one we're, we're doing for sure, just because I've had fun doing the Star Wars ones. But, you know, if you don't want to see any more of those, because I do want to cover all the DC comic book movies in this way. I already did Man of Steel, but I'd like to get some guests on, cover Man of Steel again, and then uh, cover the rest of the movies. But, hey, let us know how you're feeling about that. We've got the social media links. You can actually email us as well at shelledfilmpodcast at gmail.com. And I've actually got a couple scripts to me emailed or emailed to me through there. Uh, Somebody sent me the uh, early draft of the Baby Driver script. So at one point, we'll probably take a look at that. And we also got a Jurassic Park 4 script, which I am trying to secure a guess for. But I might save that one for when the new movie comes out, uh, which is next year, I believe. So, uh, yeah, be sure to check back for all that wonderful podcast enjoyment. But uh, thank you for listening and enjoy the rest of your week.